Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I like to apply watercolor paper to a raw artist panel. This is what I do for almost all of my watercolor paintings now. It was a complete game changer once I learned about this process. So basically we're taking this paper and applying it to an artist panel like this. It has a lot of benefits. The first biggest one for me is that it keeps the paper super flat. So while I paint, there is absolutely no buckling. I don't have to do any pre-stretching or anything like that. And then in the end, I have a very solid, tangible painting. So. so before we start this process, you want to make sure that you have your sketch ready to be transferred to your watercolor paper. However you prefer to do that, I like to use my light box. And since I can't do that after the wood block is glued down to the paper, I have to do that first. I do start off with tracing the panel onto the watercolor paper on the front side so that I can line up the composition with the light box in just a minute and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And then after I draw that first complete dimension on the front of the paper, I flip it over and with the light box, I'll just mark some little tally marks along the edge of the dimension so that when it comes time to position the panel on the back of the paper, I can just line it up with those little hash marks. Okay, so we can go ahead and dive into the tools that you need to do this. So first off, obviously we have the watercolor paper that we've talked about and we have the sketch already transferred and ready to go. And then we have our wood panel. This is just raw, so that means it isn't treated or coated in anything at all. It's just the wood. And then we have matte medium. That's basically our glue for this process. It can be used for a lot of different artistic uses. So this is actually really handy to have around, but it's a great solid archival glue. And then brushes, you definitely wanna use one that is okay with potentially being ruined or damaged. It's a very harsh, process. And then we have some just protective papers that I use to put on my work surface to keep the excess glue from getting on it. And a utility knife. This will be used to cut the excess watercolor paper from around the panel to make it nice and flush with the wood that we're gluing it to. And then I like to use just an extra larger panel to put on top of this sandwich that we're going to create to even out the weight. And then finally, I have this tub that's full of stuff. So it's kind of heavy and I use that to just squish everything together. You'll want a weight to put on top of this as it dries. I just lay down a couple of my protective papers. These are just sketches that I have held on to for a while so that I can reuse them. You do want to lay down your raw panel face up and then the watercolor paper transfer side down. And I forgot to do it at this beginning stage, but make sure that if there is like a keyhole on the back of your panel for how it's going to hang up or a certain orientation that it needs, make sure that it matches up with your sketch as well. If I had flipped this right over onto that paper right now, she would have been upside down on that panel. So pay attention to that. <laughs> but I just pour a little bit of the matte medium onto the top of the wood panel. This is something that you'll just get a little bit more of a feel for the more you do this process as far as how much glue to put down. If you put too little, the whole paper can actually pop right off. I've had that happen. If you put too much in areas, it can seep through a little bit on the watercolor paper and create some unpleasant effects. I've only had that happen at very small amount of times though. So I just make sure that I get as smooth and consistent of a layer of glue as I can over the panel. And then I take a little bit of that excess glue that I scraped off and I go back and dab it along the edge of the panel. This allows it to get just a tighter, more solid adherence on the edge. That's where it's going to take the most wear and tear and the area that as the water applies to the watercolor paper, it's going to want to peel up the most. So you want that to be really, really secure. Now I take my raw panel and I flip it over and it's time to put the glue side to the back of the watercolor paper. At this point, I did go back and make sure that the top of my transfer on my watercolor paper was pointing up and the panel is also pointing up with that keyhole so that everything is oriented correctly. And then I just lay it on the paper and very carefully align it with those little marks that I put on the back of the paper at the beginning. There's a little bit of leeway when you place the raw panel onto the paper. I find that 
if you work quick enough, the glue on the raw panel will still be wet enough that it can slide a little bit and that way you can fine tune the positioning. And I just press down on the panel. This part is a little bit more important the bigger you get if you're using a much larger panel. Sometimes they can warp a little bit so you want to make sure that you're really pressing on every area of the panel so that each part is adhering to the paper and everything's just getting really secure and locked together. And now it's time to make our sandwich. So this whole sandwich is made up of the protective paper on the very bottom and then we have the watercolor paper and the raw panel and another sheet of protective paper and then I will put my larger panel on top to distribute the weight of the heavy item that I'm putting on top of this so that everything is nice and even and then I just put my tub right on top of that and now it's time to walk away but yeah just find a place that it can sit for a while but I do recommend waiting at least three hours. The longer, the better, as far as being 100% sure that that glue is totally dry and it'll last, it won't pop off while you're painting. And I just take my panel. You do wanna be careful with picking it up by that overhang of watercolor paper. I have done that before and if I'm using a really thick, large panel, sometimes it'll just break apart, pop off from the watercolor paper by lifting it there. So be careful with that. You don't want to undo your work, but I take that and I lay out my cutting mat and I lay my panel watercolor paper side down. And then I just use the panel itself as the, the cutting edge that I can run my knife along. You do want to be careful with this process. Uh, if you're using a sharp enough knife, which I recommend, it can also cut into the wood itself. So you just want to be thoughtful and careful about this so that you're not cutting into the panel, but you're also cutting away really precisely the watercolor paper. It's not as finicky and difficult as it sounds. It's just something that I find the more focused I am while I'm doing it, the better the outcome. And now we have our panel that's ready to be painted. I love painting on these because it is honestly so perfect for me. I don't have any issues with the watercolors absorbing into the paper. I find that it it behaves just the same way as if I were to tape down my paper if it was not glued down to a panel. So this works really well and it is permanently affixed to that raw panel. So this whole thing is the painting. It is the work of art, which I love. I love having this really solid, tangible piece to work on. Hopefully this was informative and helpful. I love painting on these panels like this. It's just the perfect surface for my watercolors and my gouache for me. I do have a link down in the description that'll take you to my art shop if you'd like to get some prints or originals, some enamel pins. I have lots of art goodies over there. And I also have a link to my Patreon if you want to help support the artwork that I do and this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.